Christ Jesus concerning you. Good morning to Ministry Appreciation Sunday. You doing okay this morning? Okay, good. I think so. Michael, I need you. So where, where is where is Michael Borden? Where did he go? Did he leave? I need him to shout out every once in a while. He helps me out. But it's good to have you be present this morning. The next two Sundays are uh, a little different, but part of who we are in the fall season. We've been through uh, a lot of weeks. Our year is, uh, calendar year is almost up. And uh, we had our championship season not long ago. We championed the Lord Jesus Christ and the mission work that he's called us to is an Acts 1-8 church. And so what a tremendous conference we had throughout the summer, the spring and the summer uh, into the fall. There's time where we just really collectively plan mission work, uh, international mission trips, and, and we're involved in regional missions and, of course, ADP Sports. Every Sunday, things are going on all the time. I mentioned that last week, and uh, next Sunday, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. It'll be Thank You Sunday, but not to get ahead of that, and uh, I think of all, all those things. Today, we're going to look at ministry appreciation. This is a season again in our year where we say thank you God and we say um, as I put in my email I appreciate all that you do or I appreciate the things that you have done and that's coming from my heart as your pastor and of course thanking God for what you uh, partook in as well and how God worked through you and worked in you and in many of you I I said in the first uh, service with all the people that were there uh, that I looked around the room and just about everyone I could think of personally uh, serves in some form or capacity, uh, some form or fashion, in some capacity, either seasonally or for a regional mission outreach or for ADP sports or something like that. And and this is uh, that Sunday where we're just going to say we appreciate the ministry sacrifice that you ma make and what ministry means. Uh, in light of that, I got a little tiny video. I know you've seen a couple of little clips, but now this video will be uh, some of you on video, a series of pictures uh, and video uh, form that kind of capture what we do in outreach with regional missions and with ADP Sports and also with, uh, and then underneath regional missions, our little productions we do, our little presentations. We got one coming up December 11th, uh, right here in the auditorium. We will be having in both services uh, a little Christmas production. And uh, if you remember last year, we had one. You'll actually see some pictures of last uh, Christmas and our, our His Majesty and, of course, this spring. But I'm going to kind of allow you to just take in this little portrait of God's family and uh, how they get involved in engaging the mission. Go ahead, guys.
isn't it? Amen. So that's really a little bit of a little bit of a snapshot of of where we've been this year thus far. Again, I mentioned that we have a, a Ministry Appreciation Sunday uh, today, and uh, that's where we're in the middle of. I I grabbed our Love Never Fails uh, theme for us to be able to speak through. I'm going to go through 1 Corinthians 13. It will not be the only message from there, but that's our passage we're going to use here in a little bit. But Ministry Appreciation Sunday this week, and then Thank You Sunday next week to really just, again, stop for a minute and say thank you to the Lord, and I appreciate what you do. When, when you see, again, the, the phrase ministry appreciation, uh, I guess this must mean that this is the only day we do it. And it's not, uh, no, that's not the way it ought to be. Just as when you recognize someone or something very, very special, you say, well, I'll just, you know what, I tell you what, I'm going to be nice to my mom on Mother's Day, but the other 364 days, nah. So, you know, just like uh, some of you spouses are really nice on your anniversary, if you can remember it, and then, you know, the other 364, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, no, it doesn't go that way. And for Ministry Appreciation Sunday, you are an appreciative bunch, and you uh, allow me to make it easy to serve with you and to shepherd people that do love to get involved in ministry. What does it mean to minister or ministry? Really a simple definition and sometimes we've got, you know, some other words that we tie together to it. But as we even see in the scripture, when you're called to ministry, there really is this assignment that God called Paul out to as Saul. And um, so that is, well, the calling to ministry, but also to the ministry does be, is, is defined, and it does put us in a place where we realize it's service. It's especially of those who execute the commands of others to attend to, to have attendance. So that means you say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign up. I'm going to be part of something. You're saying, okay, tell me where to go. Tell me what to do. I'm going to bring the right kind of heart, and I'm going to fulfill what God's called me to do. Oftentimes, figuratively, uh, when you say attending to things as a servant, but figuratively you realize that it's like, okay, I'm going to teach the Bible to someone for their betterment. I'm going to attend to the needs of people, and I minister or provide relief. But again, ministry can be an office that someone's called to, just like a mom who's called to ministry for their children. That's what they have to do. Tell her that she's okay. I feel bad for her this year. Is her baby being difficult? Being like her father, isn't she? No, praise the Lord. Tell her to come back in. Baby can do anything in here. Hiccup, cry, burp. I welcome your babies in here. It's okay. Now, some of you may not, but I have a big mouth, so I really talk loud, and they sometimes they turn me up. But ministry is a part of, again, attending to things, taking care of what needs to be taken care of, especially when it comes to, to the gospel ministry. Appreciation. What does it mean to appreciate something? Sometimes people say, well, it's just another way of saying thank you. The definition from the old dictionary says, a setting a value on, an evaluation, or a not an eval, but a valuation or estimate of merit, worth, and weight, recognition of excellence. Very simply put, the word means, as the years went on from the 1828 to the 1844 to the 1913 Webster to even now, an accurate perception of someone or something, a true estimation. Well, today I want you to know that the pastor is telling you that I raise my appreciation even higher with each passing year. I see the worth and value of each one of you and how you fit into the body of Christ and how God takes care of everything that we have needs for through you. This family is a family caring for the needs of others. Just as moms care for their babies, we care for one another. But today in ministry appreciation, we're looking at how do we See what God has done through all of you to bring the gospel to people. And again, sometimes doing it collectively 
is an easier way to do it than doing it by yourself. But my hope and prayer is that as we do collective things, do you realize that love never fails? That love always, it comes back to love never fails. Charity never faileth. And when we're going to look at this passage of Scripture, and again, just kind of run through it and pull just some simple things for today that fit, I have to have you see, and it'll be up there a lot, love never fails. Love never fails when it comes to appreciating what God has done through you, and for me to say, I appreciate you in the Lord and how you're dedicated to things. Now, ADP Sports is a big outreach for us. We have children's ministry, and we have, and, and excuse me, we have youth programs and uh, for ministry, and we have adult programs for ministry opportunities. And of course, you saw some pictures out there. Now, I will tell you that the Happy Five Soccer Club pictures had a different field than the Mighty Mites pictures and the Pee Wee football pictures. Somebody came out and turned the green grass brown. Did you notice that? These guys, Steve Browse, worked so hard, and Josh, and everybody, and somebody came out and turned the grass brown. I think that's totally wrong. I'm sure hoping that God comes back and turns it back into green next year. It looks good for pictures when it's green. What's the point of me even saying that? We've been blessed with a beautiful facility. And we have a beautiful place to do mission work and to gather. So it starts out in the spring with Happy Five Soccer Club. I like to do this. I put a lot of names up there. And if I missed your name or misspelled it, I am sorry. I, I try to grab. I think I got just about everybody in there from Damon Renzulli on that list to Roger Zink. Uh, Dennis Bundren, who's been out there 100 years, to, to Debbie Cole, who's been out there 100 years, and so many others, Mike and Lisa Curtis, Larry Lewis and his son. There's a lot of teenagers on there. Alexis Valverde, young single person, Debbie Hargett, Mike Talbert, Brianna Tyson, and then you continue down there to Andrew Ward, and, and uh, you see some of these young kids, Lauren Houston, Rebecca Ward. Then you go to the next slide, and you see uh, Raphael and Sadie and Mason and Maddie and, and Bobby. And, and all the different people that are on that list. And you say, wow, there's a lot of people, uh, Happy Five Soccer Club. Are they just all standing around? No, they're not. They're part of a ministry this year that had over 320 children in it. And it's grown from a place of having just a few to having a lot to having more to having really a lot of kids out there. And we minister to them through love. Love never fails and it continues to be brought up. There's some of you that are just serving this year in the first time or some of you again that have been Happy Five Soccer Club celebrated its 18th season this year. That's crazy. That's to, to think that uh, some of the people that played in the first few years are all grown up and having kids and bringing their children to it. So it's pretty amazing. It still comes back to love never fails. Mighty Mites. Another season of Mighty Mites, 15 years of Mighty Mites. Bobby and Tyler and the Curtises and, and little Raymond snuck in there to help out. Sean O'Neill, Rick Dawson, the Talberts, uh, Andrew and Christine, uh, Craig Lester and his daughter uh, McKenna came out. McKenna is an All-American softball player. and She came out to help coach with her dad this year. It was good to have them back. Those are the neat little pieces that come out. Brian Rice, Rafael Gonzalez. Uh, they let me come back to coach my team, but they're much better coaches on my team. But what a time we had just doing something for the Lord in love never fails. Rick and Catherine Adams, Tucker Hughes, Maddox Hughes, a lot of teenagers here. Titus and Emily and Larry Lewis, of course, and Ezra and the whole crew there. At the bottom of that slide right up there, you see these names. Karen Boynton, and you see Crystal Clay, Marty Hodges, Mike Foster, Doug Nielsen, Debbie Venable, Debbie Summers, and the crew. That's the concession stand crew. And of course, you can't have any type of Saturday morning something without a coffee, a Gatorade, or a sausage biscuit, of course. And they do such a great job of meeting, greeting, and putting in, again, this whole heart attitude, this ministering heart of love never fails. It is always love never fails. And that is what we landed on this year in our Ministry Appreciation Sunday, Pee Wee Football. Gosh, think about it. There was almost, I no, I think it's over 60 people involved in 
Happy Five Soccer Club, about 40-ish of Mighty Mites. There's between 50 and 60 involved in Pee Wee football, I think 50-ish. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to serve alongside of others and the different names that I, I see up there and, and continue to see there's some repeats and there's some new ones and different people. There are people that love Pee Wee football and they love Happy Five, but they don't do Mighty Mice. There's people that do Mighty Mice that don't do the other two. But as, again, you see there's referees on here, field supervisors, people that come out and, and just serve. There's assistant coaches and head coaches. You go to the next slide. There's Tom Perry and Susan and Tom, of course, is our leader of our Pee Wee football. Damon back there on the soccer stuff. And again, the whole list, uh, Kyle Rose and Diana, his mom, helping him out and assisting him. And, and all those, Randy Adams, Nathan Snow. There's so many people that make that work. And they do it, again, there's that concession stand crew at the bottom, because they love the Lord. And they know that charity never faileth. God's love never fails. And that type of heart, that type of mindset, that type of thinking, that really is truly at the essence and the core of the success in saying, thank you, Lord, and I thank you, and I appreciate you. Adult sports, there are simply uh, three adult sports that we have. The league de uh, directors, Christine Brogan, Josh Bennett, Gabe and Courtney, with co-ed volleyball, with men's uh, softball, and with uh, co-ed volleyball, I mean, uh, excuse me, co-ed softball there with the Lutes, the umpires and referees, Josh Bennett, Jonathan Bennett, his brother came out to help out often, Dennis Haig, uh, we'll skip that guy, he wasn't, I don't know, I, I was deciding whether to put the bad umpires on here, and so I did put myself on there, and Bobby, but you know, but, uh, but I wanted to put just, this is by the way, the good umpires, these are the good referees, so there you go, there you go, okay. But they have to be loved as well. And again, they bring that love. When you have a chance to do co-ed volleyball, it is love never fails. Uh, I joke about it often, but over the years, uh, thank you for your mercy toward me and your great grace. Uh, the first few years, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Now I'm still as bad of a ref as I used to be, maybe worse. But you're nice to me, and I'm thankful for that. So I'm saying I appreciate you loving on us. When you see some of that video up there and you see some pictures of different people doing the devotions, all of our pastors have come out and do a devotion in co-ed volleyball. I think that's, I don't think I know that's powerful. And they're preaching the gospel and sharing the word of God with people. Then you come to regional missions and, and the one that really usually kicks off and it's a flagship is our VBSC. And you see in VBSC all these names up here. And, and of course, I, I had to put in, I was missing, messing around. I thought, let me put the old uh, uh, lunchtime personnel up there. But the, uh, the lunchtime people and how they come in and prepare the lunches every morning for VBSC. And then take the, they bring them out to the, the pavilion and drive them around. But that whole crew. And then you have the people that work with the 5-year-olds all the way up to the 11 and 12 years old. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, all four age groups. And you see the different people up there. Debbie Venable, Pam Snow, of course, that leads our Bible teaching. And, and uh, Brenda Dawson with our Bible memorization. And Brian overseeing everything. And the group that works so hard. Steve and Sidney Bryles, Brian and Tammy, Brandon and Talbert, Janet Talbert. There's so many up there. Mark and Cheryl Brown, Madeline Ward, Chris Burnett. There's so many people that are involved. Nathan and Nikki, their first year. Whereas we see that Josh and Addie Bennett have done it for all the years we've done. And then Courtney and Gabe Lutz have done it for all the years. And Eddie Hodges. So many different names here that make VBSC go. Why do I do this in front of you? To let you know that appreciation is really important to us. And sometimes, oftentimes... We do let things go, and we take things for granted. Appreciation. To give merit and value, and valuation to someone or something, and say that your love in the Lord never fails. Your love from the Lord, reaching people, never fails. And it moves to a place where we say, okay, charity golf tournament, what's that involve? Well, it involves a group of people that get together, uh, Jim Barclay and, and, the, and the 
the nation's Chuck and, and Nancy and Donna Best and Brian Calloway and myself, and we plan things out. We've got a meeting for planning coming up. It's our 10th year of doing our golf tournament, and we've been able to give away thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to charities and to different organizations. And, of course, it leads to that sleep and heavenly peace bed build that we had just a few weeks ago. And pretty soon there'll be some people going out to deliver the beds to children and see the whole pass completed when it comes to being involved in the charity golf tournament. There's a lot of volunteers. Boy, we had a hot day out there. And this year, the volunteers had a chance to sit, and they had to get nice and hot, and they were hoping for fans and lots of water. But it was a beautiful day because their love in the Lord made this a success. Love never fails. And you see, again, the team of people that was up on that list are so very valuable to everything that we do. When I think of, again, this honor and privilege of reaching out in missions, I realize that it is about the Word of God, and that's why I'm going to bring it to there. When I think about the productions that we have and giving thanks to all them, it's about the Word of God. People say, well, what's the list of so many conversions and so many people? There are so many things going on in the Word of God, in the Spirit of God, that continue to show us and, and bring testimony that we continue with many of the things we do. And one of the areas in some of our uh, productions, or some of our dramas, is that the Maj His Majesty that we did last Christmas had a number of people come to that, and the different people that act in those spots and places and drama. They love it. We have one coming up on December 11th. Please don't miss it. Witness his resurrection, that cast that was doing that uh, in, during the Easter time this year. And of course, the murder mystery dinner with all the people that were involved there, Mike Meyer and Jordan Meyer, Ken Ball. Ken's been in a number of them. You, you won't want to miss Ken as, uh, what is he, uh, what's he in this new one? I think he's He's a shepherd, and he's got some outfit he's going to wear, and Ken's, on, Ken's ready to go. And all the people are ready to go to what? Set up the people in their heart and minds to receive the gospel message and have the Lord use them in this place where they say, really, it is about love never fails. This is Ministry Appreciation Sunday. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, and I know that... Uh, you might say, hey, well, just let's get to the Word of God. And, and some of you, then the others would say, well, it's good to see all that. I sure hope that you just go, wow, this is really good. To be able to say, I appreciate, God, what you're doing. I appreciate how you're using so many people. Again, I look all the way over here. I look down here in the middle. I look over here and see all the different people over so many years that have been involved in our regional missions outreach our ADP sports outreach. And to say, I appreciate you is, is good, but I, I like to do it a little bit more so in person or let you know with a hug and say, we definitely couldn't have done it without you. We definitely know that you are a dis difference maker. And I think of all the different ministry leaders that have been involved as I have in a leadership position saying, wow, Look at all the different people and how they come with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, a love for one another and a love for lost souls to declare the hope that we are to declare. So here we are, 1 Corinthians 13. I'm going to just walk through three simple things and we'll be done. I hope that you're capturing a little bit of, hey, God, we really appreciate all that we've been able to do this year Let's tie it together to Scripture. And, of course, Scripture is really what's driving this with the thought, love never fails. Verse number 1, chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Verse number four. Watch this. This is one of those uh, 
just really simple things about the Bible, this is a sentence, and it's not a run-on. It says an awful lot about charity, both positive and negatively, in terms of when you have it and when you don't. Verse number four. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall, excuse me, then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now, Father, we've already had a sweet time of rejoicing in you by the name and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. We appreciate all that you have done, and I truly appreciate all the people of First Bible Baptist Church and their desire to minister, to be in ministry. This is an Appreciation Sunday for the ministry that we do collectively and corporately reaching out in this community and beyond. I thank you that you've given us this word, the beautiful word of God, that charity never faileth, that love, your love, never fails, your kind of love, that love. And I pray this morning as we just make some just simple, simple points, just simple lessons here that we're reminded of how we ought to appreciate all that you've given us to do and that we need to fulfill it until that time that you come and return. We love you and thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When you think about 1 Corinthians 13, and again, oftentimes, uh, the Word of God is treated um, maybe in uh, blocks or in segments. And that's fine. You know, you may be doing a certain series on relationships and marriage relationships, and so we need to use chapter number 13 of 1 Corinthians. Or maybe we say it and read it at a wedding and uh, before someone does their vows and and things like that. Or, like at funerals, we'll read, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Or we'll go to 1 Corinthians 15 and we'll read about uh, death, where is your sting, grave, where is your victory. And we'll read those passages and that may be the only time we do it. Well, today, in our ministry appreciation Sunday, I just was led, I had three or four things up, but this is really where God would have us to speak. You say, well, we're going to get to this chapter here in our study in 1 Corinthians uh, soon. And we will. And we'll break it down even deeper. But for today, it just hits where it's appropriate to say love never fails. That 1 Corinthians 13 clearly tells us that charity never faileth. Now, simple context. Chapter number 12 is all about spiritual gifts. Chapter 14 is about spiritual gifts. And then God puts in here by the Holy Spirit, by Paul's writings, and he says, hey, let me interject something about these gifts and how important they are, but not that they're most important. Let me interject how important ministry is, but if we don't do it by his love, I'm sorry, it's going to be vanity. It's going to be a waste. It's going to be something really nice and sounds good, and we're going to talk and pat ourselves on the back, but God's not going to really get what he deserves out of it. It's like having spiritual gifts and thinking, because I have a spiritual gift or a certain talent, I'm better than you. I should be ministering in a certain position because I'm better than you. And we lose track of, really, 
the appreciation side of someone simply saying, I'm a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ. I just want to learn how to serve. And you know what? If I can learn that part and become a, a person that really sacrifices, surrenders, that's great. I just want to serve. I just want to do something for the Lord. And there has to be a reason behind why I do what I do, and I speak of that often. On the other side of it, I want you to know, again, how much I appreciate all of you. And so I'm going to, again, as I mentioned earlier, do three little appreciations. One from the pastor, one from the leaders, and one from Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm speaking from the Word, so I'm not speaking for Jesus and twisting his words. I know that it comes when Jesus truly directed things to his disciples. So the first one is this. Your pastor appreciates God's people who engage the mission to serve others motivated by the love of Christ. Now, I appreciate all of you that serve and all of you that get in in any way, shape, or form. Again, but I really love when God's people engage the mission to serve motivated. They want to serve others motivated by the love of Christ and Christ alone. I appreciate that because it's reflective of what Jesus Christ wanted the disciples to do. Go to John chapter number 13. I'll get there in a moment. But think of these first three verses of chapter number 13 when he basically says, hey, you can have all this gift of tongues, but you have not charity, then it's not, it's useless. It's very simple. It's useless. You can say, well, let me go a little bit further with my gifts. I have the ability to prophesy. I have the ability to understand all mysteries and knowledge. Uh, I have faith so I can remove mountains, but I don't have charity, so wait a minute, I am nothing. I bestow all my goods, feed the poor, I give my body to be burned and have not charity, profit me nothing. Very simply put, there's some things in the way of you and I actually meeting God's standard for the spiritual gifts and how we minister. And he's saying, without this charity, without this love of me, without love, you're going to fail. You have nothing. So the question is, will it be the kind of love that Jesus Christ commanded, or will the kind of love Peter demonstrated? What do you mean? Well, John 13. Look at John chapter number 13. It says up there, there's the address, verse number 31. Jesus says, therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Who just went out? Judas, go. Get out of here. Now he's speaking to the 11 that are left, and he says, if God be glorified in him, should, excuse me, God shall also glorify him in himself, the Son of Man, being glorified, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you, ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, ye cannot come. So now I say unto you, a new commandment I give unto you, you know this, everybody, right? That ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another. So a lot of times people read that passage and they leave off verses 36 through 38. But we're going to read the whole thing. Because the question is, when it comes to your pastor appreciating God's people for engage the mission. When, why do I use that phrase? I use it a lot when I send you out an email and I say, would you like to be part of this mission work? Would you like to be part of this outreach? Would you like to be part of ADV Sports? Click the button, engage the mission, sign up to be a coach, an assistant coach, or a helper. So I appreciate that. I appreciate God's people that are motivated by the love of Christ. But the question is, what kind of love is it that comes to bear here? Verse number 36, 7 and 8 say this. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, whither I go, thou canst not follow me, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. You can't go to the cross where I'm going, but afterwards you can go where I'm going to go, which is to the Father, which of course is covered in the beginning of John 14. Jesus answered, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Verse 37, Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. What a great statement. There's that love. I'm going to get involved and it's, I'm going to demonstrate that kind of love for you. And what happens in verse 38? Jesus answered him, 
wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. Is my love and your love predicated on the audience? Is my love and your love that drives me to being involved in ministry and in ministry outreach a place that is safe and secure when you're around others that love Christ. And by the way, I'm sure hope that you are. But what happens if you are not out? Excuse me. If you're out and not allowing the other disciples like Peter was when someone confronted him and said, are you not the one that is with Jesus Christ? He was all by himself. You see, the question is, will it be the kind of love that Jesus Christ commanded, which is that you love, that you love as I have loved you and laid down my life? <clears throat> but that passage of Scripture that says, a verse that many of you know, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, that you have a love one for another. Or is it that my love, in Christ alone when it's tested but when it's not tested and that's really what's before us today your pastor appreciates God's people who engage the mission to serve others motivated by the love of Christ that is our motivation sometimes we're off on some things and that's fine get back to where you have the proper motivation for why you get involved in ministry outreach at First Bible Baptist Church. You say, well, since I don't, then I'm not. No, no, get your heart in a place and your mind in a place where you know this is the way I should be motivated by the command of Jesus Christ and his love. The second one I have is comes from our ministry leaders. I'm speaking for them. But this comes from a lot of years of listening to them. Our ministry leaders appreciate God's people who demonstrate ministering hearts developed by the Holy Spirit. Our leaders love that in you when you show the fruit of the Spirit in your life. That you have a heart, a ministering heart that is long-suffering. A ministering heart that operates with peace, love meekness, goodness, temperance, against such there is no law. You see, our ministry leaders, I talk to Mike Meyer often about the little group he has and doing some dramas and our little productions and things from big to small over the years. And he's so thankful, so thankful for the heart of people and how their ministering hearts are developed by the Holy Spirit. That they show, again, that love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, temperance, meekness. Against such there is no law. You are in John 13. Go to John 14 with me. Because the question is this now. The question is, will the fruit of the Spirit be evident in the relationships of God's people? Or will the fruit of the flesh that is contrary to God? Remember what it said in chapter number 13. Charity suffereth long, it's kind, and on and on it goes. See, charity bears the unbearable. Charity believes the unbelievable. Charity hopes for the hopeless, and it endures all else while all else fails. You see, charity is that big thing in the midst of us that should be coming from the Holy Spirit of God to develop our ministering heart to say, I'll do ADP sports. I'll do regional missions. I will be part of a production team. I'll be part of doing a little drama thing. I will do all that God would have me to do because I really am sitting in a place where God has worked on me through the Holy Spirit to develop the heart that Jesus Christ has. I didn't talk about the spiritual gift that you might have. I didn't talk about the special talent that God's given you that you work over. I'm talking about how the ministry leaders like Damon Renzulli and Tom Perry and Josh Bennett say, hey, I love working with the people 
at First Bible Baptist Church and ADP Sports, or like Mike Meyer says, hey, I love working with these people, and, and Pam says, I love working with the, the people that are in BBSC. I love it because they demonstrate a ministering heart that's been developed by the Holy Spirit. It's not being developed by you. So chapter number 14 in John chapter, excuse me, John's Gospel, chapter number 14, verse 25, is the fruit of the Spirit evident in the relationship of God's people interacting, or is it the fruit of the flesh? It says in verse 25, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Remember, he said that in verse 15, 16, 17. I won't leave you comfortless. I'm, I'm leaving, but the Holy Spirit's going to come. So what is he saying in this? Verse number 27 says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. That peace is going to be that peace out of Romans 5, 1. The peace with God. You see, the peace of God that passes all understanding is one thing in Philippians 4. But the peace with God, by his grace, through faith. That's what Jesus is talking about. Well, you get that peace because love, joy, peace is in the fruit of the Spirit. He says, and he continues, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard, now I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ah, that's the first fruit of the Spirit, ye would rejoice to have this rejoicing coming because you have joy. Because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. What is the statement being made here that applies? It's very simple. At that question, is the fruit of the Spirit what is evident in your relationships with your brothers and sisters in the Lord, when you come, when you com, uh, companion with them, when you partner with them to do something in regional missions? Or is it the fruit of the flesh? He agitates me. She bothers me. I can't seem to forgive her. I, I tell you what, the ministry leader, I tell you what, working with Mike Meyer is the hardest thing in the whole wide world. I don't know how anybody does it. I know, Abby, you're online up there, so... Don't tell your dad I said it. No, it's the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. And your ministry leaders that you work with, that you work under, that say, hey, I'll do whatever you want me to do to serve in ministry, to facilitate what you lead me, command me, direct me to do. They're appreciative of God's people demonstrating this heart of ministry, this ministering heart. That's developed by the Holy Spirit of God. And then lastly, I have this for you. After reading all those names and reading, talking about all those people, back to 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. Our Lord Jesus Christ appreciates God's people who serve with humility formulated by the Word of God. See, one of the thousands of things that happens to you and me when we read the Bible is that we become like John the Baptist. You must increase, I must decrease. You read scripture after scripture after scripture of Jesus Christ and his meekness. He humbled himself. He became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. The Word of God, again, knowledge, understanding, wisdom, to be more like Jesus throughout. It confirms and works, and the Holy Spirit does that. But one of the simple things that happens to you and me, let's take the converse side. I would not suggest this, but if you want to find out how arrogant and prideful you can get, don't read your Bible for a week then you become self-sufficient. You'll be still nice. You'll be a nice person. You're a believer. You become self-righteous. You say, well, if I read the Bible, I'll automatically get that back. Hmm. Are you going to look for the humility that the Word of God is going to bring you besides all those other things? Or are you just reading it to get yours? Because I see in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13 that if you have the gift of teaching, if you, if you are able 
to understand all mysteries and knowledge. And though I have all faith to move, remove mountains and you don't have charity, I am nothing. That'll level the playing field really quickly. That's what the Word of God says, not me. The Word of God says that to me, though. It just doesn't say it about me, which is true. It doesn't say it just to kind of hammer on me. It says it to me personally that this is what I want for you. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ appreciates God's people who serve with humility formulated by the Word of God. Where do you get that? Go to John 15. Because it behooves the question as I finish up. This question, the question is this. Will the mature love that only comes from Jesus Christ have its way, or will the selfish love rooted in this world? So what kind of mature love will come? The mature love is from the Word of God. The mature love is from the example of Jesus Christ. The mature love is from the fruit of the Spirit. Yes, I know that. Well, then how in the world, Pastor, do you get to a point where you just become, are you only appreciative of those people that are like this under these three characters? No. I'm thankful and appreciative for all people that serve and minister, and I'm appreciative of all that they put in, even if they're at that point where maybe they're just checking a box to do something because they were told they had to do it by their parents. Or the parents are doing it just so that their kids couldn't say that they're a hypocrite. My point is I want people always, and it's my desire as the Lord does, to move you where you're maybe that place, and yet you have your motivation changed. That the fruit of the Spirit develops a ministering heart instead of the fruit of your own flesh developing something that's selfish. That you would also allow the Word of God to learn about servanthood so that you would be humble, surrendered, submissive, sacrificial in every which way. It says in John 15, picking it up in a familiar verse, verse number 13 is it's up on the screen. Greater love hath no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You know these passages, you are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. I reference these passages a lot. They're life-changing, life-formulating. They will completely grab you if you get into the setting of what's going on. This is hours before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is murdered on the cross. He's going to hang on a tree and he still cares about them. He cares more about his disciples, his apostles. He's chosen them for a special work. And he's saying, I want you to grasp me. I want you to be rooted in my humility, not rooted in this world's rotten pride. I want you to be willing to submit to my word because I am the living word. And when this word of God gets completely put together, it's going to be for you. Because all scripture will be given by inspiration of God for you. You're going to get the Holy Spirit of God. You've got my Father in heaven. You're going to have eternal life in me. So, when the world persecutes you and hates you and rejects you because of Jesus, will you just switch sides? No, I think not. But that's what Jesus is saying. Verse number 16, he says, look. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you ask of my Father in my name, he may give it you. Here you go. These things I command you, that you love one another. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Well, because I'm hated and I'm rejected and because when I do mission work, when I do ADP sports, the people get upset at me and they're just upset with me. When I go to witness to people, they're upset with me. I'm just going to switch off. I'm just going to switch out the Holy Spirit and switch out the Word of God. No, you're not. You can't. You can't do that. It's totally wrong. Well, my ministry service needs to be completely conditional on how the circumstances are going to line up for me in a certain way. I'm going to become arrogant and selfish on how I minister. No, 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 no. And I don't see that in First Bible Baptist Church. I see the beauty of God's word and the model of the Holy Spirit, I mean the the model of Jesus Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit in you. And I love ministering with you. I love coming alongside. I think 
I can't, it's an honor for me. And I cherish the opportunity because, as it says in verse 20, remember the word that I said unto you, Jesus says, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. When you identify with the Lord Jesus Christ in the way that you minister. And again, our Lord Jesus Christ appreciates God's people who serve with that humility. But it has to be formulated by the word of God. It's so important for you and I to say, okay. As it says in verse number 13, and I finish here of 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. Still comes back to that. What is our time for prayer involved today? I have a simple question for you. Maybe it will instigate prayer. Maybe the Spirit of God's already worked. Maybe reading some passages out of familiar places. We, this is familiar word. Maybe today you say, hey, there are some areas in my life that need to be surrendered. In fact, what area? Just one in your life needs to be surrendered to God for simply being able to serve in outreach ministry. You saw the great list of people. I promise you this, if you sign up and engage the mission, there is a spot for you always. You say you got too many people. No, we don't. But we always have just enough. Our Father in heaven, thank you for your word this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you for having the privilege and honor of showing, revealing, exalting, witnessing, testifying of your great work in your people, the people of First Bible Baptist Church and this family. I thank you for them. They're very precious to me. I thank you for everyone that's so deeply involved in ministry outreach through ADP Sports and through regional missions, productions, BBSC, all of that. I pray in this invitation time for each one of us to search our hearts about what we hold back. And maybe, just maybe today in our prayer time, we would find one area that needs to be surrendered to you so that you can use us in your way, not our way. In Jesus' name, please stand.